This is Mizuno's Wave Rebellion Pro and it turns out this shoe is a real banger. I suppose that's it. Review over. Now I've got a few more things to say. Let's get into it. First of all, can we just take a minute to admire this gorgeous colorway? This is the khaki zone colorway. And I think Mizuno just really knocked it out of the park with this colorway. Yes, you can get this shoe in other colors, but honestly, I don't know why you'd want to because this colorway just stands out and looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, there is also a bit of an Easter egg hidden in this upper. Somewhere on the upper, written in calligraphy, is personal best in Japanese. Probably because I don't speak Japanese, I'm gonna have a very difficult time finding it in everything, but it's in there somewhere. I love that. Okay, but this shoe is more than just astounding good looks. This is the Wave Rebellion Pro. It is Mizuno's first super shoe. And when was the first super shoe, right? It's the Nike 4% back in 2017. I think and Mizuno is just bringing to market their Wave Rebellion Pro in 2023. So they've been biding their time. And I think it was probably worth the wait because what they have come out with is a pretty astounding super shoe. And I know the term super shoe is thrown around like nobody's business, but that label super shoe 100% applies to the Wave Rebellion Pro. And of course it does have super shoe pricing. This will cost you $250 here in the US. So certainly not cheap, but definitely normal. And if you compare it to the other super shoes that are costing you around $250, the Wave Rebellion Pro actually represents great value. This is fun, this is different, and it's fast. Now we do have 39 millimeters in the heel, 35 millimeters in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop. Now, if you live in Australia or Europe, you are gonna see on the Mizuno website that this has a four and a half millimeter drop. I don't know which one is right. I'm just reading the specs from the screen. I highly doubt that they actually make different shoes for Europe and North America. But if you know something that I don't know, let me know in the comments. Oh, I did come across something funny on the European Mizuno site. And Mizuno is claiming that this shoe is for people that run two and a half hour marathons or better. That's a pretty select group of people that they're focusing on. But I am happy to tell you as someone that is nowhere near running a two and a half hour marathon, that you don't have to run a two and a half hour marathon for this shoe to make sense for you. But we'll talk about ride in just a second. So this does fit true to size. Fits me like every other Mizuno shoe that I've ever worn and also like most of the brands out there. I haven't experienced any issue with sizing, with fit. As far as weight goes, a US men's size nine is gonna tip the scales at around 7.9 ounces or 224 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, it tips the scale at 9.8 ounces or 278 grams, which is definitely one of the lightest shoes that I have. Not the lightest, but it's definitely on the light end of the spectrum. And honestly, when you put this on your foot, it just, it feels super light. But that's also a product of everything else that goes in to make this shoe what it is, specifically the geometry. But let's start at the top and work our way down. Look at this heel collar. I don't know how well you can see this, but we actually have, for a super shoe, a relatively high amount of cushioning around this heel collar, and it is remarkably comfortable. I don't wanna say it's daily trainer level cushioning because it's certainly not, but it's certainly more than normal super shoe level cushioning, which is actually pretty refreshing. And the step in feel of the shoe is very good. Now, the cushioning, you can't see it. I'm looking on the inside from this angle, but the cushioning only comes down to about here and then it wraps around from the top of the heel collar down probably about a centimeter, maybe two centimeters around the top of the heel collar, which is exactly what you need. We then just have this engineered mesh, which is open, very difficult to see here, but from the inside, I can see the light coming through. So the whole shoe is going to be very breathable. Now, I said the upper is an engineered mesh. It is super light. And in this colorway, it is very difficult to imagine that this is very breathable, but there are a lot of laser cut holes all the way around. And when I take a peek down into the shoe, there is just a lot of light coming through the upper, indicating that it's very thin, very breathable. And I have been taking this out on some very warm runs here in Florida and my feet have stayed cool and they've been comfortable. Now, look how well this upper stands up on top of the shoe. There's actually some good structure in this upper, even though there aren't many overlays. Now, from the inside, you can see that this bit of foam here on the side comes a little higher. So it's kind of pushing the upper up to keep it moving in the right direction. We've then got a little structure along the eyelet chain and then some underlays right around the toe box just to keep this area of your foot nice and cool and aerated. So this upper isn't gonna be like a blanket smothering your foot. And then we've got the Mizuno Runbird logo, which I think is absolutely gorgeous how they've done this from the heel all the way down to the toe of the foot. As far as fit goes, I found this shoe very comfortable. I had plenty of room in the forefoot where I didn't feel like the upper was just a little bit too tight around my foot and I was able to get a nice lockdown across Across my midfoot without cinching the laces too tight together, which for me is an indicator that the upper might have just a tad too much volume. Not so in the Wave Rebellion Pro, this shoe fits my foot very well. There's really nothing special about the laces, they do the job, but if we're talking about the laces, we may as well talk about the tongue next because the laces are all up in the tongue's business. 
smoothness in the tongue is just what you would expect. It is super thin. I should probably put something on the screen right now to show you a better view of the tongue, but it is very thin, it's quite wide, it is not gusseted. Now, while I appreciate Mizuno not gusseting the tongue, maybe for the sake of saving just a little bit of weight, I think maybe on the next iteration, a very small, lightweight gusset might do some favors to the tongue and your foot going into the shoe, just because the tongue is so light and so wispy that sometimes the edges of the tongue kind of got bunched up on my foot, and then I had to kind of reach down and kind of pull it out or take my whole foot out and then put it back in in order to reposition the tongue on top of my foot. But once my foot was actually in the shoe, I didn't have any issues whatsoever with the tongue because there is a double lace loop right on top. And that double lace loop is actually a pretty ideal way of stopping tongue migration. I only have the issue when I put my foot in. If I'm not paying attention to putting my foot in, sometimes the sides of the tongue can just wrap around a bit. I feel like I'm being a bit nitpicky by talking about that aspect of the tongue because it only requires paying a little more attention when I put my foot into the shoe. But if you're someone that likes to just throw your foot into the shoe without even thinking about it, you might run into a small issue until you figure it out or you just get used to it. One more thing that I actually skipped over is the heel counter. Now, on a race day shoe, especially on a lightweight race day shoe, sometimes these shoe companies like to go with almost nothing in the heel counter, just a flappy piece of material that doesn't exactly hug your foot from the back. Now Mizuno in the Wave Rebellion Pro has kind of combated this by putting a very small heel counter. And I would say this heel counter is no more, no more than two centimeters wide but it does run right up the back, so it gives the back of the shoe a lot of structure. And this is something else that just contributes to this shoe feeling extremely good when you put your foot in. Didn't experience any heel slip, and I didn't have to use the heel lock method. Alright guys, you know what time it is. It's time to come down to the midsole. And I've said it before, and it especially applies in this instance, but the midsole is where the magic happens. And guys, if you have run in a Mizuno shoe before, and perhaps you thought to yourself, Matt, Mizuno's shoes are just a little firm. I like a bit of squish under my foot when I go out for a run. Because you are going to change your mind with this shoe. This is nothing like Mizuno has ever done before. This shoe has a soft and responsive underfoot feeling. Now, if you use some other super shoes from some other brands, you're going to know that feeling of a Piba foam with a big stack height with just the plate running through the middle to give a little extra pop and stability to the whole unit. You're going to recognize that feeling in the Wave Rebellion Pro. And to me, that's what I think about when I think about marathon race day shoes now. It's that super soft yet still responsive feeling. And if you like that feeling, this shoe is exactly what you're looking for. Now, Mizuno is using a dual density setup for the midsole foam. And you can actually see it if you look close on the camera that we have. We have a top layer of foam and a bottom layer of foam. Now the top layer of foam is Energy Light Plus and on the bottom we have Energy Light. In between these two foams, and we can get a little glimpse of it on the medial side right here, is a carbon infused nylon wave plate. And this is a full length plate. And because I don't want to take apart these gorgeous shoes to actually get a look at the wave plate, you're just going to have to take my word for it, but there is a honeycomb pattern right at the forefoot of the wave plate. And that supposedly is going to give you a little more energy when you toe off. I don't know how well that honeycomb system works, but I can tell you that this shoe feels very energetic with its toe off. Which brings me to the geometry of the Wave Rebellion Pro. Let me hold this up to the camera just like that. Look at that. There is something that stands out that isn't like other shoes, right? It's right here. It's this heel bevel. And this heel bevel, along with the toe spring and the kind of rocker-like look, is Mizuno's geometry they're calling smooth speed assist. And this smooth speed assist is actually pretty forward thinking. And forward thinking, that's a good one, Matt. It is forward throwing in that when you are out running, this shoe feels like it is throwing you forward. I mean, it really does feel that propulsive. But now this is a pretty big but. I think this shoe takes a little getting used to. And by saying that it takes a little getting used to, I don't want you to worry that you're going to spend hours running in the shoe before you get used to it. No, it'll take you a few minutes into your first run. And before I took this out on its first run, I actually wore it around the house. And wearing it around the house, is not as comfortable as you would think. In fact, when I was wearing it around the house, I kind of was wondering, how is this shoe gonna feel on the run? I wasn't sure if I liked it because when I'm walking around, I had a distinct feeling up on the arch of my foot. It was almost like there was a tennis ball a very soft tennis ball stuck under the arch of my foot, right where this big bulk of midsole is. But it's certainly fun to step in because there is that roll. But then when you put it on your feet and you go out and you start running, you still notice that kind of feeling that something is in the arch of your foot until you stop noticing it. And that feeling kind of goes away. So at the making of this video, I have put about 40 miles into the Wave Rebellion Pro. And it's actually something that I don't notice at all anymore. But when you start running for those first couple minutes, you're going to be thinking, oh, that's a, that's a funny feeling. A funny area of my foot that I'm not used to feeling foam. But after a few minutes of running, 
think that feeling goes away. And I think it's your body adapting to the geometry of the shoe and also the foam compressing just a little bit as you start running. Now, something else. This shoe does not like going slow, at least for me. And when I say slow, I'm not talking about actual speed. I'm talking about individual interpretations of slow and fast. Because just like all of you out there, you are faster than some people and slower than some other people. And I found that for me, running at an easy pace in the Wave Rebellion Pro is not as comfortable as when I pick up the pace. And I'll be honest, this isn't the case with all super shoes. There are some super shoes out there that I think could double as a training shoe. And by saying that, I'm like, it's comfortable at all paces. For me, the Wave Rebellion Pro is not comfortable when I'm running at an easy pace. For me, it just takes a little too much concentration on how I need to be landing, but it hasn't been a shoe that I've been gravitating towards for all my runs. But the great thing is, is that unless you test shoes like I do, you're not going to be taking this shoe out for an easy run. This is a race day shoe. This is designed to go fast and it goes fast very well. Because when I pick up the pace and I'm doing tempo runs and I have done a lot of tempo runs, I've done a lot of intervals in this shoe. And when you get to those sessions and you just need to pick up the pace, that's when this shoe comes alive and that's when you get that feeling of being thrown forward. The Wave Rebellion Pro is fun to run in because I think it makes you feel faster than you really are. Does that make sense? So if you've got to this point in the video and you're actually asking yourself, well, Matt, do you recommend this shoe? I can say that yes, I definitely recommend the Wave Rebellion Pro. This is like nothing you have tried before. It's actually very refreshing to have something that feels so different and so aggressive while still having this level of cushioning to protect your body while you're doing it. It's actually a pretty outstanding running shoe. If you are thinking about getting this, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Oh, one more thing that doesn't really mean a lot, but actually means a lot, is this G3 rubber outsole. The grip is absolutely fantastic. And I was actually out running in this shoe this morning before I sat down to make this video, and I ran on some wet wood. I was running on a boardwalk, and it was totally wet, totally slippery, and yet when I went around a corner on the wood, I was expecting to feel a little slip. I didn't have any with this G3 rubber outsole. So definitely high praise, and also look at the coverage. There are some super shoes out there that just aren't gonna last you. Like, you know those super shoes that have strategically placed rubber? This has rubber on all the outsoles that's going to touch the ground. So it's gonna last you a long time. It's time for me to hear from you. I wanna know what your super shoe of choice is. I wanna know if you are considering getting the Wave Rebellion Pro. And if you have made it to this point in the video, why don't you put the pen emoji in the comments just to let me know that you have made it all the way to this point in the video. And obviously I think the pen is what they're using to do their calligraphy across the shoe. And with that, my name's Matt. This is my review of Mizuno's Wave Rebellion Pro. Pretty super, super shoe. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days. Thank you.